Hey guys, how are you? Tom McKeown here, www.yourtruechange.com. Don't forget to sign up for my free social media entrepreneurship course called Five Things You Need to Know to Create a Business from Nothing. Uh, you go to www.yourtruechange.com and you will see uh, right there where exactly where you can sign up to find out what are the five things that you need to go from having virtually zero business experience to being able to uh, to to uh, form and operate your own profitable business uh, in as early as one week from now. So definitely don't miss that. Um, as many of you know, I used to be a corporate sales director uh, with a financial services uh, company and I used to be an investment banker as well. And uh, one of the problems that we had, just like many of you have out there, uh, are getting prospects to sign the damn contract. Um, so often they give you a verbal commitment, but they don't sign. It might be a, some huge corporation where there's tons of bureaucracy. Uh, it might be some, you know, small peanut company that just simply won't get back to you or make up their mind. How do you push them to make that, uh, that to sign the dotted line and to go from prospect to client? It's very, very, very difficult whether uh, you're a boutique law firm, a boutique bank, you're a boutique insurance company, you're a service provider of any nature where you need a contract in order to bring in the money and to start doing your work. So today I'm going to go over the three ways to push your prospect to sign. Okay, Three things that you can do. There are many things you can do, but three things that I do typically to get my clients to sign up. Uh, to give them a little bit more incentive so they'll kind of move their bum and go forward uh, and become a client of mine so I can get them off my prospect list and uh, get them over uh, on the uh, get them over in the p l section if you know what I mean um, number one of course and this is something that um, you know is very very popular that of course is the time sensitive discount um, it all depends what type of product or service you're selling. If uh, you're selling an eBay's product or an eBay service, whether it's as a consultant, uh, whether it is you know an ebook or whatever, you can always tie your offering to a certain date. Say you say, okay, look, you know it's usually two hundred ninety nine dollars, or it's usually you know like like you know four thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars, but we are offering uh, a season discount that's been authorized uh, by the people up top. Uh, to to uh, yeah, sell it um, for you know I don't know this price that's 20% off or 25% off or 50% off or whatever it is okay um, and then you obviously tie it to that make sure you honor uh, your work so don't sit there and say look you only have until September 14th and then they go and they sign up on the 16th and then suddenly they, you know that they can get it for the same price because if you do that then, then they won't take your word going forward right so you want to make sure that you are that you are using that time sensitive discount to get them to have incentive to sign up with it because even if they have a little bit of interest they might say you know what maybe I'll, I'll, I'll look into this okay and and they won't push you off and that point they're going to realistically assess whether what you're offering your product or your service truly addresses their pain or truly addresses what they need or want. Whereas if there wasn't a time sensitive discount, there's a very good chance they'll say, you know what, that looks interesting. I'll get back to it next month. And you know, we, we all know where that goes, right? Uh, number two, of course, is the time sensitive inclusion. So it works the same way as a time sensitive discount. What's the main difference? With time sensitive inclusion, you're offering extra things for free. Okay, I'll offer two extra hours of of, of like you know consulting or coaching uh, uh, fees for free. I'll offer you know four extra hours of whatever. Um, you know, I I will do this. If you're a lawyer, a consultant, a coach, this is absolutely valuable, right? Because people get their bills and they go and they fall off their chair. You don't want that. And if people say, you know what, I can get a couple extra hours for free here, and I'm probably going to go forward with them anyway. Or I'd like to go forward with them. Anyway, you know what? Maybe it's worth it. Yeah, why not? Right. So, offering some sort of added value. If you need product, maybe you offer a secondary product like half off, or maybe for free. Okay. If it's let's say a 50-page ebook, and you have a, have a separate 10-page ebook, and maybe you give that for free, or maybe you, you give them half off a second 50-page ebook. Right. So the time-sensitive inclusion is really good. And of course, thirdly, and this one I absolutely love, and this is something that uh, I learned. Uh, when I was running a corporate sales department is the break clause. I absolutely love this. This is when if you sign, let's say, for example, a one year long contract and someone says, 
eh, I don't know if we want to do it. I'm looking at your competitors. I'm looking at their prices, X, Y, and Z. Okay, what you do is you say, okay, look, how about this? Let's get you on for a one-year contract, 12 months, and what we'll do is we'll give you either a six-month or in some cases a three-month break clause, meaning that after six months to three months or whatever the break clause is, they have the chance to opt out. So therefore, you basically put the contract into two separate agreements, and now what this does is one of the two things. One of three things. One, it makes them more comfortable because they realize that they're not committing to the full amount of the contract and the full duration of the contract that uh, you told them about and you agreed with them up front. Okay? Two, it helps you um, get them and their money in and get them as a client in, but it also um, has it that you, know, you do have to perform and you do have to make them comfortable. right? And then number three, once they sign the contract, with a break clause, um, you know, unless your product or service is not a fit for them or you don't do a very good job, chances that they're going to break the break clause is probably slim. Okay, so if you're if you're offering what you're saying and they're even considering it or seriously considering it, chances of them breaking it, barring some big you know economic collapse or like you know internal budget fiasco that that they might have, they're probably not going to break it. Right, so they're probably going to sit there and just go forward with the year and still pay for the year. So the break clause does uh, work great in order to kind of ease people's pain a little bit there. Right, so I just want to share those three things of three things you can do to get to push prospects to sign that work great for any type of service or, or you know in some cases product provider. Okay, when you're trying to sell your services, it, that's what I use. That's what I still use now. I hope it was helpful. www dot your true change dot com don't forget to uh, go to my website to sign up for my free course to see the five things that you need in order to start a business uh, from being absolutely nobody never ran a business never thought of a business never done jack with a business before to having a profitable business within one week uh, from today okay so go on that chain your true change dot com I'm Tom McKeown thanks for watching